I don't want to get into a discussion about when that would end um, with respect to this case. What I will tell you, though, I'm happy to to explain to you kind of how that process were to work. Um, it, you know, the Coast Guard prosecutes search and rescue cases on a, on a daily basis, and sometimes we don't find what we're looking for, and you have to you have to carefully consider uh, all of the factors, and um, there are a lot of factors you consider. And then after you consider all of those factors, sometimes you're you're in a position where you have to make a tough decision. We're not there yet, um, but if we continue to search, potentially we could be at that point. But again, we're not there yet, and um, that's a discussion that we will have uh, with the family long before um, I'm going to discuss that here publicly. I'm sorry, man. Yeah, so I, I can't put a number on 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 the like. You know, I, I'm not going to put a percent. I don't have a percentage number. What I would tell you is that that is just one data point, and there are more there are more data points than that that we have to look at. So right now we continue to search, and we'll have that later. Sure. So the re the report so. The, the noises were heard by a Canadian P3, and that was this morning and some yesterday. I don't know specifically over that 30 minute intervals, but again, I really think the important point to that is we're in the air, we're searching there. We moved assets and we're searching there, and um, and we'll continue to do so. Yeah, I don't. So, I, listen. I, whether it's operable or whether it's um, sitting on the ocean floor, whether it's in the sea column, whether it's in the surface, I, you know, I, it's all speculation. And I, and, I, and we're we're just not in the business of speculation. We're in the business of searching, and we're putting everything we can with the data we have to search for the vessel. And I think we'll take uh, we'll take one more question. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, so so we um, we we asked uh, for some additional um, uh, subsurface uh, support, and um, we got that through the Navy, um, through a, a liaison officer. He, he's just one of uh, of many team members, and uh, we're we're greatly appreciative of the British government and all the support they've given us. Can we expect a daily update now on this? So uh, I, I think the plan will be to do it to do a daily like this. I'm not going to lock into that right now, but um, but we'll keep you informed. And certainly, if, uh, if there's any major developments, we'll let you know. Thank you very much. General, did you say submarine, sir? Are you saying? Sub Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Captain Jamie Frederick with the First Coast Guard District, and I'll provide an update on our ongoing search efforts for the Titan submarine. Behind me, or beside me, I should say, uh, you'll see uh, several subject matter experts from the Unified Command who introduce themselves uh, momentarily. These individuals represent only a small fraction of the many dedicated professionals working around the clock on this complex response effort. We understand this is an extremely difficult time for the families of the missing crew members aboard the Titan, and our thoughts go out to them and the crew. The Unified Command team is working tirelessly to bring all available assets and expertise to bear as quickly as possible in response to this complex operation. And we remain in co close contact with the family members and the crew to ensure they are fully aware of our current and future search efforts. Additionally, we have been in close contact with the British and French Consulates General to ensure that they are fully appraised of our efforts and we are ensuring that their concerns are being addressed. We're incredibly grateful for the full spectrum of international assistance that has been provided, including an expert Submariner uh, from the Royal Navy, who's here with us uh, serving aboard uh, as a critical member of our team. Additionally, a team of highly trained French ROV operators departed St. John's last night are en route to aid the search. Moreover, our Canadian partners have been providing critical leadership and significant response capabilities since the beginning of our efforts. Again, this is an incredibly complex search operation requiring both surface and subsurface elements, and our unified approach is critical. The location of the search, 900 miles east of Cape Cod and 400 miles southeast of St. John's, makes it exceptionally difficult to mobilize large amounts of equipment quickly. 
In spite of those challenges, we've been able to provide continuous air and surface search assets, as well as additional ROV capability to search below the surface. We currently have five surface assets searching for the Titan, and we expect 10 total surface assets to search in the next 24 to 48 hours. There are two ROVs actively searching, and several more are en route and will arrive by tomorrow morning. We've received incredible support with aviation assets from our Coast Guard Air Station in Elizabeth City, the Air National Guard, and Canadian Armed Forces. Today there are two back-to-back -back P3 flights. Uh, one is ongoing now as I speak, uh, totaling 14 hours of continuous uh, on-scene coverage, and two C-130 flights, uh, also one ongoing now uh, throughout the day and into the evening. Yesterday, I welcome you back on here. If you're new, consider subscribing, liking, and also share this video. Now, the very sad news we are having in this moment in time is about um, the submarine that actually must have or is believed to have implored on the floor of the Atlantic Ocean. And we all know the Ocean Gate company was the one that owned that submarine that is believed to have got lost from the radars and it's nowhere to be seen um for the past three four days um the team is believed to have actually um have searched for the submarine but um by thursday they believed the vessel might have run out of oxygen and the survivors are nowhere to be seen now according to the latest gospel we are seeing on the internet it's believed the daughter of one of the five people that were inside this missing submersible submersible or submarine an oceanograph um, said that she hoped they will be rescuing one of the parents actually this daughter is saying that she's comfortable by the knowledge that he uh, that the father is in place and he is loved the most um there is a lot of stress on the family uh, very mixed emotions as the search for the submarine enters a very great coffee uh, that was on Thursday as the vessel, like I've told you, might have run out of oxygen. So the family are saying they really hope they will find them and they are still safe. So they're saying they think they have to trust what they are doing. Uh, those are the professionals and um, their family will be able to gate their members who are actually lost on this submarine. More still, according to the reports that are still coming out, um, it's believed that the five major pieces that have been found on the ocean floor actually do belong to this submarine that must have employed on the base of the ocean. The search operation still continues for some time. Of course, more details are being brought to the public and the U.S. Coast Guard is actually still in the very hectic process of finding out whether the survivors are still in there. We've also seen the company that provides the crude submersible for the tourism industry research and exploration. Actually, that's the same company that owns this submarine. They've come out with a statement and said, we now believe that our CEO, Stockton Rush, uh, Shahzan Daud and his son, Suleiman Daud, Hamish Harding, and Paul Henry Nagolet have sadly been lost. These men were true explorers who shared a, a distinct spirit of adventure and deep passion for exploring and protecting the world's oceans. Our hearts are with these five souls and every member of their families during this tragic time. We believe the laws of life and joy they brought to everyone they knew. It's a, extremely a very sad moment. Um, so that's the company they have come out to release a statement actually for them they have lost hope thinking uh, they are believing that the souls or the people that were in this submarine are actually all dead in this moment in time personally I do believe and I still have hope that God may um, actually do the miracle and at least they find the bodies of these 
people who are in the submarine it's really a very intense situation uh, this story has been running for actually a couple of days now i didn't even want to do it but it touched me think um after seeing the daughter coming out actually to uh, continue believing that his father might be at least somewhere struck or his body might be stuck somewhere and there is at least a hope of at least regaining these bodies of these people uh, we respectfully ask for the privacy uh, of the families to be respected during this most painful time and of course we are continuing to pray for them because it's really very heartening and very saddening losing a, a person you are close to and in such a very horrible way that is um, getting lost within a submarine and you know what at the end of it all they see the wreckages you know so it's really a very intense situation, but of course we'll be coming out to give you all the details as they come out.